just want to take a quick little moment here to thank my Patreons. What you do helps tremendously. It really does. Uh, secondly, I want to say that life has been a little bit busy lately. I, I got married. Yay! So that's been <laughs> eating up a lot of my time. We recorded uh, this video uh, last year in December, and it was a, a little bit of a negative video. And I, at the end of the year, I wanted to be a little bit more positive, so I just sat on it. And then now, with all the unstable geopolitical situations going on in the world, I feel a little bit angrier than usual. And I think this is a good time for me to unleash my frustration in this video in a positive way. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week with some new material. So let's get to it. Now, if you've been in this board game hobby long enough, then you've definitely heard of a little well-known Japanese publisher, Oink. Now, Oink is known for making micro games. Micro games are tiny games that fit in this box, or at least they're supposed to. Sometimes Oink really crams components into these boxes, and sometimes they're a little tricky to squeeze back in. Now, people go crazy over Oink and this publisher. And I can totally understand why. I think that the art design on the front looks really sleek and cool. The components are always high quality, nice, good cardstock, good plastic. Some of them even have metal coins. But if you had to ask me, do I think that all these games are worth owning? I'm, I'm gonna say no. There are hundreds of thousands of board games out there. You don't need to know all. I am going to be culling my collection and I'm going to cut at least half of these games. It's going to be a little bit hard. I really loved all these games. I have cherished and all of them. I have great memories playing with and my friends and I think it's time to let them go. Go to that farm upstate where my dog is. All right. I'm going to do all 20 of these games in under 15 minutes because I don't have time to waste. Ah, let's get cracking. Troika. Troika is basically Oink's version of gin rummy where you're slowly picking up picking up pieces and making sets, and it's it's just kind of mediocre. There's not really much interaction there, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this one away. Joker Jong, ah, Joker Jong is one of the newer games. I really, really wanted to like this game. It has betting, bluffing, uh, deduction, and dogs. You basically have your dogs, and you're hiding behind one of five doors, and you're slowly eliminating each of the player's doors, and you eventually try and hide your dogs, move your dogs, and deceive people to try and get them away from picking your dogs. And all the components are nice, they're lovely, and the dogs are really nice quality, but I don't know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't really get into this, this game. Maybe it's because I'm not a dog person? I don't know. This one is getting given away. Next. Ooh, a fake artist goes to New York is probably one of the best Oink games available. Now, I mean, you could just buy whiteboards and do this yourself, but I think it's definitely worth keeping. Uh, essentially, you are giving whiteboards to everybody. Everybody knows what they're drawing except for one person, and then everyone's taking a turn drawing one line. At the end of everyone drawing the picture, you kind of have to guess who was the fake artist, and the fake artist is trying to pretend to blend in. So I think this is a really good party game, really fun. After you draw it, you can open it up, and you can see all the pieces that you've drawn on. And I really like this little art collection that grows in here. This one's staying in the collection. Ooh, in a grove. This is one of the newer ones. The original was like one of the smaller boxes. This is a deduction game, not a social deduction game. There are all these little people here. One of them is dead. There are three suspects. And you have to decide amongst all the players, like which one's the culprit. And you get to look at the left of players and you're looking and you're deciding and you're slowly deducing by what other people see. Some people see stuff that you don't, so not all the information is open. And... <sighs> I don't know. I want to like this game. I think it's one of the better ones, but I think I'm just going to give it to a friend of mine. He's been having a rough time. He loves this game. It's his favorite Noink game, and I'm going to give this to him. So this one, stay. This one is go. Ooh. Whew. Nine Tiles Panic. I do not like real-time games. I just find them kind of annoying, but I really like Nine Tiles Panic. It's basically Men in Black, the board game. It has agents, hamburgers, and you have these nice nice little tiles. And in real time, you kind of make a three by three city grid with roads and everything has to make sense. And you're trying to complete these orders and you want to be the first one. And then you'll see like, oh, who had the most men chasing hamburgers, hamburgers chasing aliens, aliens eating hamburgers, children playing in the playground. And then you'll see a win. The first one to do it uh, breaks a tie break. If you don't make a city in time though, it's really punishing. This is really fun though. And I think a lot of people will really enjoy this. I played this with uh, some of my students way back in the day and they all love this game. This one. 
It's definitely a keeper. Durian. I do not like eating durian. I do not understand why people like eating durian. I feel the same way with like Singapore where you go to the like first two floors of any hotel and they're like, no durian, no durian in this hotel. That's how I feel. As for this game, this is definitely one of the better Oink games. There's a bell, your, your boss is a giant gorilla and you're trying to deduce who messed up the orders in the game. And you slowly have to bluff and deceive and, and there's a bell and there's a bell and everyone pushes the bell all the time. And it's kind of annoying and a little bit obnoxious. Like if you think people playing Rhino Hero in the corner are loud and obnoxious in the board game cafe, this bell will drive you bananas. Um, I enjoyed my time with it. I don't see myself going back to it. So this one is going to get uh, donated to a friend. Ooh, tricks and the phantom. This is basically Oink's version of Love Letter. So imagine Love Letter, but a little meatier. So the cards have super and you're slowly deducing what each card can do and as you we play the game again and again and again. You'll get more familiar with the game and the cards and be able to count things a lot better, just like Love Letter. However, Love Letter, I think, is the better game because it's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit smoother. This one has great components, great pieces, but I don't know. I just find it to be a little bit too meaty for me. And you really want to play with probably at least four people. Otherwise, it's not as fun. And Love Letter, you can play with fewer. So, Tricks of the Phantom, you get to go donate it to a friend. Ah, Moon Adventure. This is a re-implementation of the original Deep Sea Adventure game. This, I think, is a five. Like, I think this is a bad game. There is a design that I just really don't like, but if I play with my house variant, I think it's one of the best games. This is also one of the few games that you can actually play solo. Basically, you crash, you place your crash, crash landed, your pilots, your, your astronauts are going out to the moon, trying to find O2 containers, and then you have to bring them back to the ship. In the original game, you don't know if those are good or bad containers, and you go in, and maybe you live, maybe you die. In my version, you pick them up, you look at it, and then you can't tell anyone else what you got. I think this is a great game, definitely worth keeping. Insider, this is a fantastic game. Definitely one of the best games in all of the Oink games that they've made. This is basically 20 questions, the game with a little bit more fun. However, you know, I like the re-implementation of werewolves. Werewords, I think werewords is a little bit more approachable. People get kind of confused with the flowchart of when you guess, who guesses, and what guesses, and werewords just has an app, and I just said, just, just do what the app said. Do what it said. So I'm giving this to my friend, Zogan. <laughs> Zogan is like, I don't know, there's a game that came out a while ago, like banana taco, taco bell pizza or whatever. And this is basically what it is. You give all of these viruses names and you have to name them as you pick them up. And it's fun, I guess. Maybe kids can have fun, silly times with it. I just don't see myself going back to it at all. So. Dual Clash Poker can only be played with four people. And it's a pretty good card game. You know how in Euro games, how maybe at the end of the game, you'll see like, oh, this person gets placed, you're tied for second and third, and then here's someone else in fourth place. Well, because you tied, you don't get anything. And that's kind of like what this is. It's a 2v2 game, which is very rare for Oink. And I think, hey, the world needs more 2v2 games. But you're standing there with your partner and you want to play the highest card, but you don't want to tie with anyone. Otherwise you won't get any points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. And I, there's just so many other better card games out there that I don't see myself returning this one that often gets donated. Fafnir is an auction game. And there aren't many auction games in the Oink catalog. And it's one of those interesting auction games where basically every time you auction and the money that you're bidding with are also control the value of, of your eggs or whatever you have left over. So you want to bid with stuff that you don't want to lose and it is not a really good auction game. And I think the reason why is because I didn't feel much control. Like it's a little bit random. I can't control what my opponents do. I can only control what I do. And therefore I really have no control over the resources that I left and the value of them. So it's a little bit of a shot in the dark as to if I win or not. And I think it's worth playing maybe once or twice. So this one gets donated. Stardust is the best game in the Oink collection. I just think this is a fantastic card game. You are investors invested in startups and you're putting the cards down, investing them, but you can't have the most. Well, you want to have the most at the end of the game. At the end of the game, if you have the most, then everyone gives you money. And you, if you have the most, you can't add more cards to it. You kind of cut off. You have the little Monopoly token and you're there. I think this one is probably the best one there. If I could only keep one game in this, it would be this one without hesitation. This one saves me. The only problem I have in this game is that it only plays three to seven people and it doesn't play two. And in this pandemic world, I would kind of like the game that plays two. Deep Sea 
adventure is that game that built the house of oink i think this is a good dang game and i can appreciate the game design i just don't like it for some reason i think it's because i never won it's basically a push your luck game on your arm submarine and you go down to the bottom of the ocean you're picking up treasure and you're bringing it back but as you're bringing it back you're moving slower because you're carrying something and you're eating up oxygen for everybody else i think that ink and gold is a better push your luck game but ink and gold doesn't have your actions don't affect your opponents in that sense and then this one really does and i never won this game and i just i don't know i'm gonna keep it for now because out of nostalgia but and i think this is a great one great introduction into oink if you want to know what oink is all about this is probably the one to get this is probably the worst game i've ever played <laughs> it's just terrible it's the hardest one to put back in the box because you get these really really nice quality bags bags are filled with money and you you're putting coins in everybody's bag and you pick up your bag you kind of lift it up here and you kind of get tell if oh do i have the special light token that makes me win or lose a game and it's just uh it's too slow for like a nice little bluffing game and it's just not as interesting for like an older gamer and maybe kids can like it but no 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 who doesn't like mexican wrestling love it uh this is a trick taking game that is really interesting it plays up two to six people i think it plays well but two and maybe four is where i cap it out and you control the suits are ranked and tiered just like the wrestlers but you don't know what those are at the beginning of the game and slowly as you play your tricks you can decide that order i really like this game it can feel kind of a little bit repetitive after you've played it again and again but i really enjoy this game this is one of the first uh oink games i ever bought and it has stayed in my collection ever since this one is going to stay for a very long time troll is easily one of the best uh, oink games i am not keeping it you basically have a hand of like zero to five uh, everyone is playing these and you want to be the highest card because then you can go first and get the treasure however if the total sum of everyone else is too high i believe then you wake up the troll the troll comes and eats the highest number and then you don't get any of the treasures there it's really good actually but i don't find myself going back to it that often and a lot of the people that i play with like yeah it's okay and they don't really want to play it either so i guess i just kind of have to let it go moving on dungeon of mandem 8 this is basically welcome to the dungeon uh welcome to the dungeon was originally an oink game oink game uh, licensed there they kept, they called it welcome to the dungeon and then welcome to the dungeon had a sequel and then they took all those games and put it back into this this is fantastic this is a great game There's, but it only plays up to four people which is a little bit of a problem but you're basically <laughs> some adventure way outside a monster cave if you're like i can go in without my mag shield and go out without my sword i don't need my helmet and you're kind of like disrobing in front of the cave and eventually people are just saying i'm out i'm out i'm out and then eventually you're the last one like okay well i gotta go in and you gotta kill all these monsters it's a really fun game and it's a lot of fun always good laughs stay out stays it's welcome a little bit but so worth it this is kobayakawa this is great now a lot of these games have bluffing and this game is just bluffing and betting it's just 15 cards and a lot of it are coins which is pretty impressive for oink and i gotta say that it's just very very simple everybody has a card on your turn you either draw a new card or you flip the top center card and the center card at the end of the round everyone flips over the cards from zero to 15 and you see who has the highest number if you're the lowest number you add your number to the number that's in the center of the table and whoever has the highest wins you also gamble and wager if you think you could win and i find this really fun maybe like 20 minutes 30 minute game but really good and i think if you want a nice little bluffing game this is fantastic this is not 20 10 11 8 i do have 20 and that's this one scout jerry that's not an oink game well yes it is an oink game it got licensed by oink this is the original game and i will say that this is an amazing card game and these card games that are here and the reason why i don't want them is because i have scout scout is a ladder game where you basically just want to get rid of all the cards in your hand the twist is is that you can scout so instead of playing your little set of like of a straight or four of a kind or whatever you can play a scout token so whoever played the most recent set you give them a point and then you take a card that was played now the card is i don't know how to say this not double-sided but there are two numbers one on the top and one on the bottom so like this could be a five this could be a one and you add it to your hand and you could rotate it any way you want and then you could use that card to create a set that you play this is a lot of fun i didn't think i would really fall over head over heels in this game but this is definitely one of the best games to come from asia in the last three years excellent game i like this art a lot better than the oink one the oink is like blue orange the food circus theme and no no i don't like circuses and that has been oink games in 15 minutes so i thought it could be take me 20 i only did it in 15 boom i'm out all right guys if you learned anything at all about oink and you're curious about oink uh 
Comment below and let me know which games do you like, do which games do you hate. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you learned, if you've never even played an Oink game, which one do you think sounds good for you? I want to say that I don't hate Oink, but I do think they are an overhyped company. I do think that people put too much emphasis on Oink, but I can totally understand their love for this. I'm not diminishing their love at all. All these games are good games. I just don't see myself coming back to them. Uh, one of my friends is having a rough time, so I'm going to donate all these games to him, and he's running an auction as a fundraiser to help out his family, and I think that's more important. I have said this many, many times, especially in the last few years, guys. I love games, but I love gamers more. That's right. That's you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the end of the video. I want to thank Thank you to all my Patreons out there for making this happen. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I'll see you for next week's video.